uh, hello from my side on this beautiful, hot, sunny summer afternoon mm -hmm. in Berlin. Not exactly what I call Berlin, the outskirts of Berlin, but it's, <laughs> it's wonderful to be out in the nature. So um, I would like to thank Mark and his team um, to speak again at an ICD event. I, I think the last time was in New York City um, for the UN, no, diplomacy in the UN forum, and now here in Berlin. So I'm going to speak about the Arabic cultural house, the Divan. And as I was introduced, uh, how in this case, or with this institution, cultural exchange can enhance integration. Uh, some background information about the uh, cultural house, the Arabic cultural house. Um, it was opened uh, last year in November 21st, um, um, officially by his Excellency um, Abdul Rahman Al Thani, who is the Foreign Minister of the State of Qatar, and uh, at the same time he serves as a, a Deputy Prime Minister of his country. So here you can see who is behind this initiative. It's the State of Qatar, but it's not uh, only for bilateral cultural exchange between Germany and Qatar, but it's for the exchange between the entire Arab world and Germany. So we have 22 Arab states. Um, the history about the house is quite interesting. Um, it was uh, built in 1904 for um, a local publisher called uh, Mr. Calais. And then uh, during the Cold War, the Americans uh, used it for several years for recreative, a recreation center for children and adolescents. Later, the property was um, empty for a long time. Um, most of the 90s, there, there was nothing. And then it was shortly rented by a local film production company. And eventually, in 1997, the state of Qatar bought the building. But for a long time, uh, they didn't find the right use. It was initially planned to have a guest house. Uh, I think before it was uh, even thought about to be the embassy. But then in 2017, finally, uh, this wonderful uh, house opened, and now it has a, it has a very good use. Um, I joined the team in beginning of this year, January, as an advisor for the cultural programming and planning, the strategy, and how to basically um, yeah introduce the new initiative to Berlin and the world. Our mission and vision. Um, what we would like to do is to bring together uh, cultures um, and build bridges of communication and the Arab culture and the German culture. Um, we want to do this by um, introducing the Arab culture in the fields of art, literature, and uh, history. And we want to introduce the Arab-German dialogue through cultural programming, cultural programs in the fields of uh, our four overall topics in the house. This is culture and culture in any way you can imagine. Um, then it's education and science, it's sport, it's innovation and entrepreneurship, and finally it's uh, politics. Our aims are to contribute to an effective structure for the mutual Arab-German cultural relations in the aforementioned fields, the, the, the five uh, overall topics I just um, told you, to promote communication and collaboration and increase the understanding of mutual cultures and highlight the similarities among uh, people. To build and improve relations through partnerships with, our, uh, with other cultural institutions in Germany. And this leads us to the way we are set up as an institution. Um, we, are, we understand ourselves as a platform model. So we invite um, everyone who has an interest in Arab-German cultural relations to just approach us and um, pitch ideas. And then we could do together um, um, maybe a possible event. And this was the case with, with ICD, as you can see later. Um, we would like to show the rich Arab literature through the library. We have a big library at our house. And develop uh, different training programs, workshops, and holding conferences, similar to what ICD is doing. Um, already we partnered with, uh, with different uh, other institutions. And I just listed. Um, some of them, uh, you can see the ICD, we, we um, 
partnered with other universities, with festivals, with German think tanks, with local initiatives for um, refugees, with schools, uh, with embassies, and, and so on and so on. What did we do until now? Um, as I said, within these five main topics, we organized 15 events so far. The aim for this year is 30, and then we step by step um, extend the program. We are still a, a rather small team with three uh, people working full time, and we have um, volunteers helping us. I think that uh, pictures speak uh, for themselves or can, can give a better impression than me talking and, and you see the, the, you see the uh, sheets here from a PowerPoint. So I would like to, to um, tell you a bit about our events so far. This is the, f the first event we ever did. Um, it was with ICD um, for the, I think, how was the conference called here? Um, cultural diplomacy conference here in Berlin. It was in February um, this year. And we hosted a session um, at the Arabic Cultural House to Divan, where we've invited um, Syrian musicians and also Dr. Rasha Chata from uh, Oime, who um, is a researcher from Oxford University and did her PhD about um, how the Arab youth after the so-called Arab Spring in, in after 2011 used comics as a means to express themselves. Another event, as you can see, is for, in the field of our uh, political topic. Is uh, ambassador you, on, the, on the left hand side? You can see our the chairman of the, our advisory be, advisory board, um, ambassador of Qatar, uh, Sheikh Saud Al Thani, and on the right hand side you see um, the ambassador of Afghanistan, who gave a lecture on the gap between politicians and uh, political advisors. It was very interesting um, because he, Chalali, the ambassador of Afghanistan, also used, um, uh, used to serve as the Minister of Interior in his country in the post-Taliban times. So here you can see that we have also this high-level political talks and several other ambassadors were present. Um, another example, um, an event, a workshop about sports as a, a mean of uh, diplomacy. Um, as you might know, Qatar will host the uh, uh, World Cup uh, in 2022 after we saw it uh, last month ending in Russia. And here we invited some professors, individuals who are, all were active in, in the um, Qatari uh, sports sector. We also um, attend external events. This is one example. It's called uh, Delicanto Food Festival. Uh, it's an annual festival in Berlin um, from a member of uh, the German parliament um, where all embassies have the possibility to, to show themselves and to show the culture of their country. So on behalf of Qatar with the Arabic Cultural House, we participated this year. My, my most favorite event this year, it, it's very high class. Um, it was with Sheikh Al Mayasa, who is the chairperson of, or chairwoman of the Qatar Museums, which is uh, the institution in Qatar taking care about uh, the cultural sectors and all the museums which are built in, in her country. She's also the sister of the current emir. And it's my age, but way more powerful. <laughs> But uh, she's, she's a very impressive person, and she gave a lecture here um, together with, with other panelists. You can see Reem Kohlhaas, this very um, famous architect who built the Qatar National Library, which recently opened. And then you have uh, Jean Nouvel, who is the architect of the Qatar National Museum, who, uh, which will be opened next year in, in March. Um, so the reason was that the New York Times Art Leaders Network Conference took place in New York, and she took this um, event um, uh, to, to host a, a panel in our garden at the Arabic Cultural House. Here you can see several book launches we already organized. Um, 
<laughs> also with with uh, Arab uh, people from from other countries, not only not only Qatar. We had Syrian, we had Palestinian people um, introducing their books. Um, sometimes um, combined with uh, musical um, uh, performance. This was um, an event with, uh, in cooperation with the German Council on Foreign Relations, where um, we spoke about Qatari foreign policy. So the ambassador was there and answered questions. And um, so it's a format I myself developed when I served as a vice president for the DJP, the, the Council on Foreign Relations. So I brought them into our house. As you can see, this was fun. And this is a very wonderful example how to um, show German kids or in, uh, international kids because these kids are um, uh, attending the kindergarten for, of the John F. Kennedy School, which is an American German school in, in, in Zehlendorf. And we invited them to celebrate with us the Garangao Festival, which is uh, similar to what we know here in the West as Halloween. Um, it takes place in the, in the middle of the holy month of Ramadan and the kids get candies and, and, and nuts and they play games and get face painted and play games. So this, is, this was a very, uh, or it's a very good example how you could introduce these kids which maybe did not know before what Garangao is about to show them in, in, a, in a playful way. The World uh, Championship this year, it was one month and we showed every game in our garden. Um, it was interesting because our target group were uh, three, three groups of people. Um, first, the uh, diplomatic corps, so all embassies um, represented in Berlin, Germany. And then friends and stakeholders of our house and finally our neighbors. And this was very interesting because it was the first event when we really opened up to our neighbors, uh, but in, in, invited only the immediate neighborhood. And the reactions were quite interesting because first a dad with his two uh, children came over and said, yeah, there was some talk in the neighborhood and we didn't know, should we go, should we come, what's going on there? And um, But it turned out to be a big success. In the end, we had 1,500 people in this one month uh, for, the, for the finals alone. The 200 people were showing up and the neighbors told their neighbors and they brought friends and family and it was a very uh, familiar atmosphere. And also, um, everyone was mixed and there was no strong hierarchies between diplomats, neighbors, and so on and so on. Um, this was an event um, where I learned myself something new. That's interesting. I always look for, for a task in my life where I can learn myself. Um, it was with uh, the embassy of Sudan in, in Berlin. And two speakers from the Sudan Film Factory um, spoke about recent developments in Khartoum's uh, upcoming cultural scene. With also by the help of the Goethe Institute uh, from, from the German foreign cultural policy. A cooking course, that's also what we do, and it's also another uh, good example how people, hi, how people uh, can come together and explore together um, uh, culture, uh, in, in this case, uh, food. So we cook different um, uh, dishes from the um, Arab Gulf countries. So how can we contribute to a better integration? I would say after the experiences so far, it's been uh, eight months since the opening, that we can build bridges of communication between Eastern and Western civilizations, that we can build deep and sustainable relations based on understanding and highlighting common grounds. And key for all of this is dialogue, um, which is the only way to identify oneself to the other, so as to achieve some common understanding in the face of all forms of intolerance. But, and there is a big but, um, and this is maybe nothing new to you, but it's difficult sometimes to motivate people to leave their beliefs. Um, you could see it with the football event, even the neighbors in Zehlendorf is a district where 
let's say, middle class and upper class people live. So they should be more open, you would think, uh, for new initiatives, but, but still they, they're sometimes assistant. And um, that's why it's, it's, it's very important to have some kind of ambassadors or some allies in the neighborhoods who, who speak up uh, on behalf of you. Um, so what's important is uh, that you have to build actively moments to get to know each other. Um, interactive programming is key here. S as you could see with the, with the kids festival, the Garangao, this was, this was perfect, and also with the cooking. Um, so, of course, workshops and, and, and lectures are also a nice way, way to learn something new. But to really explore the culture, um, everything you can taste, you can see, you can touch uh, is, is way better. And then uh, it's not that one person is, is introducing something new but you can experience it yourself and exchange minds and your experiences with, with people, with other people. Um, what's well, also a challenge is that you have to try the, the different uh, interests of people. So you have, if we take the Arab world and, and Germany, and of course it's difficult because what is Germany? Um, Berlin kind of is an island, but uh, all over Germany, I will come back later to the to the numbers, uh, it's a mixed society. So doing programming um, with the aim to introduce uh, the Arab culture and the German culture to each other, I mean, there is no such thing as the Arab culture or the German culture. Um, anyways, there are different interests on both sides. And um, yeah, you, you have to try to, to match um, the interests and I think what can help is this universal need uh, every one of us has it is to learn new things and that's the, the connecting element. The conclusion um, you have to offer added value that means um, a, a true service to, to the people who should come and not only learn something new but also maybe can as I, as I said I, I, I'm as I said um, can can experience it themselves. Some uh, assumptions for discussion or question and answer round, and the first one is easy to buy in. Uh, only by getting to know each other we can raise mutual understanding. Um, by meeting each other we can reduce stereotypes and fears. We can at least try. Um, what I think is, is important that we do not have to accept uh, or understand everything about the other side, but we need to discuss how we would like to live together and enrich each, each other. And this is the same which I found in my PhD. It's a different field, but it was about intercultural differences in business. And here, I think you don't have to, to, to understand everything. And you won't, even if you speak uh, the language, maybe in this case, Arabic fluent, which is the key to, to someone else's soul, I would say, if you speak his, his or her language. But there's still some, some things you, you won't understand. And I think you don't have to understand. You just have to accept it or leave it. Um, I think that our initiative is a timely and very important um, initiative. If you look at the numbers, I was referring to it uh, before. Um, every fifth German has a migration background. In total numbers, it's 18.6 million or 22.5% of our society. So by saying this, um, I want to finish my, my short remarks here today, and I'm open for questions and a discussion. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Please, Olympia. Thank you for your presentation. Mm -hmm. No, it's open. It's open from 9 to 4 p.m. every day. And we, st we started to, g uh, to give uh, membership cards to our neighbors, who grant, um, which grant access to all our events. We have a newsletter. We're working on a homepage. And then we are more um, <coughs> transparent to, in our external communication, but it's step by step. But it's open. You can, uh, you can come over and, and see the house or go to the library and, and, and read the books there, yes. 
other events, sorry, the last thing, other events are by invitation only. It depends uh, different uh, formats. Yes, there, the next one is um, August 27, and it's in cooperation with the film prize of the Robert Bosch Foundation. Since 2012, they have a film prize for Arab-German co-productions, and we're going to show the, the winners of the past years of this film prize in our garden, short movies. One even won a, um, an, an Oscar, a short movie. So it's, it's very nice. And we wanted to use this huge screen we bought for a lot of money after the World Cup. So we have an um, Arab um, desert tent in our garden, and that's beautiful because we can do outdoor cinema. Yeah, that's the next event. Yeah, we, thanks for the question. We are definitely open for new partnerships. Um, one, one example is the John F. Kennedy School we have this partnership with. Um, they have a program called National Honor Society where the best uh, students are only having the best grades but also showing um, uh, enga uh, social engagement uh, and, com and community work. So they work with us. And it's also a very nice example because they tell their parents and. Another um, example was uh, for the Ramadan, we did uh, different uh, iftars, so the break of the fast in the evening. For example, with the uh, Willkommensbündnis Berlin Steglitz Zehlendorf, it's a local initiative for refugee work. Um, but this was very interesting because you, you were referring to, okay, you, you are a kind of elite place, and, and yes, that's true, we are both, we are both. And we had different programs, and we are aiming for having both. But it was very interesting to see because you could see this, uh, some of the uh, Syrian boys who came there and it was, I think it was just to, uh, like a shock for them. It, the, the contrast, the contrast uh, was, was too much, you know. There's this wonderful house which was uh, refurbished for millions and it looks, very, it looks like a five-star luxury hotel and they come to the garden and they came from somewhere else. So um, also we are not based in, in, in the, in the districts where where, the, where Arabs live in Berlin, which is more Kreuzberg, um, Neukölln, or um, yeah, Wedding, exactly, to name the three. But um, that's our, also our aim to make the program as attractive enough to bring them out to us or even go into their districts on a later stage. But we have to go step by step. As I said, we are new, and we are looking for acceptance also. And this is turning to, to, I think it's going well until now. But um, yeah, Ag again, we are not an elite place only. We have different programs, yeah. Yeah, we have another question. Yes. Yeah. And uh, speaking about the cultural diplomacy, do you think about uh, how to uh, communicate better, to know each other better, to, to get trust, uh, and uh, to develop uh, cultural programs? And uh, it was a very difficult moment last year when we tried to decide what to select uh, from our uh, program because we, we 
develop around 2,000 events every year in uh, more than 18 countries in Europe and uh, abroad. Yeah. Yeah. So, for example, the traditional music from Romania, um, it was uh, so uh, uh, well uh, received in the uh, in many festivals in Arabic world, for example. So, um, the first step is I don't know maybe on this platform for me for my colleagues will be so uh, interesting to find uh, some message. Yeah, no, it's a good question. Yeah. yeah, the only way words I can say in uh, in your language is "tu Basque," mm -hmm. <laughs> because I had once a girlfriend. Yeah, yeah. This is the most I know, I know. <laughs> okay, th this aside uh, to your question. Yeah. Um, you you always have to pick and you have to focus and you can focus uh, on a monthly basis or weekly basis. I would say monthly or maybe. Um, uh, every three months you select the different topics. What we did is we have these uh, five overall topics and we try to break down our events. And um, our strategy, strategy is to, to look out what's already there. When we started, um, I sat down with all these organizations who already uh, do work in, in the field of Arab-German relations, uh, some of them for decades. So they know the players in the field they know the problems and the challenges. They they know their interests and the topics they would like to to address. And um, I mean, I'm from this field. I know the Arab-German relations pretty well. But um, I'm not in. I'm not a. I don't have the expertise of a museum's director, nor I'm a gallerist. You know. So um, we're working together with with external consultants because my job is rather the the meta management level. I have to bring all the the dots together. Um, but I definitely would say you need to, uh, or you should speak to to trusted um, consultants or advisors, and not not only paid ones, but also from from strong networks, from personal networks. That's what we do. And then we start to, from there, we start to break down um, the events in our um, um, in in our five overall topics. But we, yeah. Yeah, but I, I would also try. I mean, th there was an exhibition from the Emiratis here and the Miko Lecto Surun Mitte last year, and then we had uh, uh, from from the state of Qatar, we had an uh, exhibition at uh, Kraftwerk in Berlin in Köpenicker Straße called Contemporary Art Qatar, um, where they showed um, many, uh, on three floors, it was a huge exhibition, and they made it open to the public, and there was heavy advertisement also in Berlin. So I, I wouldn't be too shy, just go out there. <laughs> And I think they, they are happy, we, we are happy. So if, if you would like to come, I, uh, I would like to welcome you in, in our house and, and maybe see what we can do together. Of yeah. Thank you. Uh, I Mm -hmm. And I would 
Yeah, I, 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 I misspelled it, sorry. Yeah. It's fine. Yeah. <laughs> I can't understand you. Yeah. But by the way, this celebrate just for the GCC country. I know, it's a Kalichi yeah. tradition. Yeah. What do you, what, so what you will do in the future if you have any plan to, to make uh, the whole Arab world uh, present in your center? And also what you expect from Arab people who live here or studying here from different, different countries, like for example in Saudi Arabia, Almost 6,000 uh, Saudi students here studying. Mm -hmm. or maybe, maybe from Syria or other countries. What mm -hmm. do you expect from these uh, Arab people here? Yeah, I mean, first of all, true. This is a Khalidji tradition. It's from the Gulf. We, we also said this. But, and, and I mean, me personally, I'm, I'm learning every day. But we have um, Arab colleagues. Um, and we reaching out. We reached out to all the embassies here, to all the 22 Arab states. So we're working with them, and we just start. I have to say, but um, what we expect from from Arabs living here in Berlin is to to come to us. We're an open house to come with actively approach us with their ideas and see what we can do together. And we already had like some examples where it worked uh, pretty well. So, so people come and say, "Hey, um, I'm do I'm doing music." and I'm looking for a, um, a venue to do it. So I say, you're happy to welcome to, to perform at our house. We can give you the venue for free. We can pay for the catering. You can inv invent your, your friends, your network, mm -hmm. and then you, you have a, a stage to present yourself. Mm -hmm. The same is for readings, the book launches, for example. These were initiatives of the people. They came to us, not the other way around. Yes, yes, yes. This is what we do right now. This is why I'm here tonight. Uh, this is why I speak on other occasions. This is why we uh, set up the, um, the, the home page uh, so it will be launched soon, um, step by step. But this is the, the, the main aim in the communication strategy to, to be more transparent. Yeah. Thank you. Shukran. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. There are two more, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's good, it's good. Yeah. Um, so again, also congratulations. Um, I mean, I think we're very proud of the European Roma Institute for Arts and Culture. I took quite a lot of affinity to your institution because we also were born just last year. We have a seat in Berlin. Uh, <laughs> what is the difference that we work internationally, not only here in Germany? Um, but what, what I wanted to ask you is, um, because of course the mission is to build bridges and communication kind of intercultural understanding and I guess the underlying kind of silent thing is the question of the attitudes uh, towards the Arab world in general, the stereotypes and prejudice and how this, these trends are being much more visible even here in Germany, and also in other places. And from, from your work, I, I also noticed that you have uh, this very high level, like you mentioned, also yeah. diplomatic, which I think mm. is excellent, it's extremely important to have this political dialogue. Yeah. And then there's this kind of very direct face-to-face with the community, uh, with your neighbors, you know, kind of a very, very grassroots, but also very small outreach. Mm -hmm. So I wonder whether there is any theory of change or any, any approach that you want to take on this more mid-level towards kind of really educating societies and trying to counteract in this growing kind of trends of Arabophobia mm -hmm. in Germany and abroad. Mm -hmm. So what we are, or what, what is planned is that we want to um, offer language courses uh, in cooperation with the uh, um, Qatar Foundation International, International, they do it in in in, w in based in Washington D.C. In, in the U.S. and also in the U.K. now, so we're talking to them. Um, and in the mid to long term, yes, we would like to reach out not only to our neighbors and friends, and not only here in Berlin, but all over Germany and maybe even to other European countries. But it's a first of its uh, kind uh, initiative. And also, I, I would say in the Arab world, only a Gulf country can do such a thing because it costs a lot of money. Uh, we start little, but we would like to expand and, and, and grow organically, I would say. Yeah. Do you have a 
There's one last, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I know. I know the problem. Um, the, the visa thing is is a very difficult thing, and and, and can be the, one of the biggest challenges to to invite people to 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 come um, for for exchanges in the in the cultural field. But um, fr from, I mean, we're not a lobby organization. We can we can um, address these problems in in in, in high ranking talks, and we do so. But um, we we face the same challenges and. As, as I said, we just started, so um, maybe in the future we have to deal with it more, but right now, um, and also there, there is a problem with some Arab states, especially the Arab states where, where war and conflict is, is, is uh, the, the sad reality. Um, Whereas with the with the Gulf countries, it's, it's a bit easier, but also there, as you know, there, the political situation right now, it's also a bit difficult, so there can be different reasons for the difficulties with the visa or cultural exchange. And we try to leave yeah. politics out of the door, but yeah. as you know, sometimes it interferes still. Um, but to, uh, to make it short, um, I have it personally, I have, have experiences uh, from other positions or other institutions I advise, but not so with the, with the Arabic cultural house so far. So thank you very much.